Hi, Professor. Um, this is Asmar. Uh, I've been stuck for five hours on this options thing for chapter 20, and I'd like to just very briefly, in very simple elementary English, want to just, just spell out my concept, and then you can correct me. I wanted to shoot at this video rather than writing it out because it was tough. So, uh, getting to the meat of the question, I'd like to say that the 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 long position. I'd like to start by this: the long position. If you have the long position, that means that you have the right to exercise. So the word "long" is associated with the right to exercise. That's the key. So which means even if you have a uh, a uh, a call option or a put option. If you are at a long position, that means that being at a long position, if you have a call option, you have the right to buy an asset. Right to buy an asset. So you can exercise that option and buy an asset if you have a call option. And if you're at a long position, then, and if you have a put option, which means you have the right to sell an asset. So we should not forget that being at a long position means we have the right to exercise either of the two options, either call option to buy an asset or put option to sell an asset. Now, going towards the short position. If I am at a short position, intuitively that means that I am shorter, I am smaller, I am poor. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll take, I'll take the, the loss kind of thing but at a sh at a at a short position means that i i and this is what what my intuition what i have built my understanding is and i'll rephrase it like that that being at a short position means that i have to honor the right of the long position holder so so say for example if uh, i i have gotten the the call option then the long position holder has the right to exercise the option and he can sell the asset. So if he comes to me to sell his asset and exercise his right, uh, uh, sorry, he, for the call option, he comes to me to buy the asset. So he exercise his right, being a long position holder and a call option, he comes to buy the asset. So he exercises his right. Being at a short position, it is my obligation to honor his right of buying the asset because he's at a long position, he has got a call option, so he is buying and he has got the right to exercise this. Being at a short position, I have an obligation to honor his right of buying. So how can I honor his right of buying? I can only honor his right of buying by selling him uh, that asset. So he has come from a long position to buy an asset at a certain strike price. And I have an obligation being at short position to sell him that asset at that very same strike price. And why he has come to buy the asset at the strike price? Because he's following the principle of buy low and sell high. And he has come to buy that asset at a strike price because the market price of that stock in the market is higher than the strike price. So the stock price in the market is higher, the strike price is lower, that's why this guy has come in to exercise his right to buy. But being at a short position, I have to honor his right. So I have to sell him the asset at the same strike price. So which means I have to buy the asset from the market at a higher price, sell him at a lower price, honoring his right to buy, and then he will buy at a lower price, strike price, and he will go back into the market and sell at a higher price, because in the market it's a higher price, and he'll make money. So I have lost money, and he has gained money. So which means being at a short position in call options, I have lost money, and being at a long position, he has gained money, only and only because of the fact that the strike price was lower than the market price of the stock, or in other words, the market price of the stock was higher than the strike price. Uh, I hope it makes sense. So please confirm if that understanding is correct. Okay, thank you so much, Professor. Cheers. Bye.